Hello hockey fans, my name is David. Thought I would start this uh, video at 5.34 on the afternoon of Friday, 12th of May, 2023, North American Easter Time. It's been a very interesting week in the ice hockey world. It's uh, the start of an international tournament, the Adult Men's Worlds, Top Division 1, taking place in the south of Finland and the west of, La and the west of Latvia. Uh, the Canadian team is in Group B in, uh, yeah, Group B in you know, Riga in Western Latvia, Group A is in Finland in the extreme south, Tampere, whoops, <laughs> sorry that. So a very interesting day, it's, uh, Canada ended up, the Canadian team ended up, oh, eat this. All right, just trying to get there. Just using an old laptop, and all right, let me just ski here. Just give me a moment here. Right, I'm gonna try another browser because this one's not doing too well. All right, I'm just gonna go to the other browser and just. Was that one? The problem with Opera. Alright, so. It's definitely a big victory by the Canadian Adult men's team. It's a 6 0 over its uh, Latvian counterpart. And uh, as of now, the Canadian team is, uh, have the best, have the highest goal difference in its group. Of course, that may change. I mean, it was a very close game between Czech and Slovak teams. Let's see what happens. I mean, there's still, in terms of, uh, in terms of round rob action, it's going to be on the, uh, well, all right. <clears throat> I mean, Group B is definitely going to be some action on, uh, on Friday Eastern time. So, so at 520. <laughs> 5.20 on Friday Eastern time between the Swiss and Slovene national teams. And then Norway, Kazakhstan will go. Will broadcast time to, to start. Well, maybe talk drop, whatever. And what is it there? Nine twenty Eastern time. And uh, Slovakia, Latvia, one twenty Eastern time. So <laughs> it's going to be some really early games. Oh, that's you know, that's what it is. It's Eastern European time, which is seven hours ahead of North American Eastern time. It's going to be some very early games, and I'm I'm just getting into the tournament as you know that six nil, very important victory, a big contrast to how the under eighteen men's team had managed to do in its opening game, eight nil shutout on the wrong end of an eight nil sh eight nil shutout by its Swedish counterpart. Sweden's not you know the Swedish adult men's team is not in the same group. Did win its game. It was only by one goal, though. So it was, you know, may not you know. And when I look at the team here and the roster uh, for a 2023 tournament, if it's available, oh, oh wait, ah, need that one. All right, never mind. You're gonna go to the rosters. Just give me a moment here. At least the top division. So Sweden. Is well, finally limited. You have among you know, NHLers or, un or otherwise under contract with NHL teams Patrick Nemet, Arizona Coyotes, Lucas Raymond of the Detroit Red Wings, Jasper Wallstedt, or it could be Wallstedt, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it would be pronounced that way, like it would be in German, Minnesota Wild. Jakob Silverberg of the Anaheim Ducks. Rasmus Sandin, former lead defenseman uh, with Washington Capitals now. Jonathan Berggren with the Wings. Fabian Zetterlund with the San Jose Sharks. Karl Grundstrom with the Galley Kings. And Alex Neander with the Penguins. So it's just, it's interesting that there are so few. <laughs> Maybe that's why the Swedish team ended up struggling mightily. And that's even against a German team that had no Tim Stutzler and no 
and no Leon Dreisaitl. <laughs> then again, Leon Dreisaitl is a little bit busy playing for the Oilers, for an Oilers team that's still in the Stanley Cup playoffs, so it may only be by the time that you know the IHF tournament is over, or by the time the German team is eliminated, whenever that occurs, that he'll be available to play too late then. Let's see about you know, the German team. Leon Gavanke with Manto and Moose. Whilst under contract to the Winnipeg Jets. Born in Berlin, 1999. So, yeah, never played at the NHL level, but put up okay numbers the last two seasons, but both seasons kind of been a mix in the AHL, so who knows? Who knows if we got to call up to the, pe to the Winnipeg Jets with the rebuild? Maybe that he does. Then we have J.J. Paterka, Leon Gavonke, the defenseman, J.J. Paterka, the center, probably playing for the Buffalo Sabres. Well, Sabres ended up not qualifying for the Stanley Cup playoffs, so yeah, he was available. Here we go with Renan Jeller, Maurice Sider, defenseman for the Detroit Red Wings, Nico Sturm of San Jose Sharks. Well, the team didn't qualify, so <laughs> and there are a lot of others. I think they're all from, you know, German teams around Germany. So, yeah, yeah. What could you do though? So I gotta be concerned, you know, if I'm you know if I were a fan of Sweden, I'd be a little bit concerned because hey, that you know because they lost, they won they won by a slim margin. I'll see what happens. It's gonna be interesting, that's for sure. Alright, so where do we go where do we go here? Alright, so we're going, Yeah. You know wanna look at I mean I mean Denmark though, I mean look at the, the group A here. Right, we have oh all right let's go to the rosters here let's look at the IHF roster here so we have Denmark oh well, is there really anyone from NHL team nope it's only one from a Canadian or American team well Mississauga Steelheads of the Ontario Hockey League Casper Dunk Larsen yeah otherwise from Know, Danish teams or teams from neighboring Sweden or Germany, at least among those countries, it can be reached by road. So it's going to be interesting how the Danish team performs. So this is Group A Austria. You have Marco Rossi in the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, that'll be interesting here. Finland. Hand up. No. I mean, hey. And Finland may very well have an argument to make that it should be up there too. I mean, it's four one to the Americans. We'll have to see though. Yeah, it looks like oh Finland's gonna be relegated to get it. <laughs> it's only one game, so we'll have to see what happens. I'm not gonna watch all the games probably because there's just so many of them are early, early on. They're like it's seven hours ahead. So like by the time it's eight o'clock, eight in the evening over in Latvia, it's one, still one o'clock in the afternoon over in southern Ontario where I live. So yeah, and look at the rosters. Also available 2023 IHF World Championship rosters page Wikipedia. Finland, Oli Mata, who's a defenseman for the Detroit Red Wings. Yolarmia, the hat. Yolarmia is a winger for the Habs. Casper Kapanen, a winger for the St. Louis Blues, formerly with Leeds, with Leeds one time, Yusuke Okonora, who, well, was not drafted by an NHL team, and, I don't know, well, yeah. And we go to Sakuri Manin. The, the forward playing for the Henderson Silver Knights. And he's 
under contract to the Vegas Golden Knights. So, hasn't really played in the NHL after a lot of experience in uh, what, the draft or whatever. No, he would not. He's played with the Henderson Silver Knights. He averaged well over half a point per game during the regular season, 22-23. AHL season, it's going to go to where it's going. So, yes. Henderson Silver Knights did do very well. <laughs> 63 points over 72 games. Finishing six points back of the Tucson Roadrunners and Air and San Jose Barracuda for that final playoff spot. But again, the Roadrunners end up. Um, I'm not sure what the tiebreakers were, but Roadrunners Road run won that tiebreaker. The you know, over the Barracuda. Silver Knights end up second second last. The San Diego Gulls with 43 points. Philly of the Anaheim Ducks finishing lower. So, Scary Mandin. Maybe he's not very familiar because, well, he he's in the HL. Who knows if he'll get a call up for the Golden Knights? Who knows? You know. I mean, Austria's the only one in HLer, but, you know, Finland, you know, may very well have a very good chance of finishing second. Looks like they have enough NHLers. And that group to to perform well, make a good case for you know at least a second place finish. France looks like it's not really any NHLer there. Louis Boudon for, for with the Iowa Heartlanders of the East Coast Hockey League, well far away from the East Coast of the U, of the contiguous U.S. So <laughs> not. And well, who knows if you get up to the NHL. We have just Justa Adamo, the Wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins. No info available on him in English, but yeah, who knows? Germany, who knows what happened? A couple were our contract to the NHL team, but well, quite a few are. So maybe they'll get in there. Maybe they'll finish in third, top four. Hungary, who knows? Recently promoted from Division One, one player on any Canadian or a team based in Canada, Washington D.C., Hawaii, Alaska, or the United States. Christoph Pop with the Northern Michigan Wildcats of the NCAA. So it'll be interesting what happens. Haven't played yet. Sweden, who knows? You got some NHLers players are otherwise under contract. So yeah. So it could be, you know, a battle between the United States, Finland, and Sweden for top spot. United States is like is loaded, <laughs> locked and loaded. Players, so you know, either players playing in the NHL or otherwise under contract. Ronnie Tard via the Lehigh Valley Phantoms under contract with Philadelphia Flyers. Sam Walker. Iowa Wild under contract to Minnesota Wild. Yeah, Dylan Sandberg, interesting there. Playing for the Winnipeg Jets, where he did. Sean Farrell with the Habs. And Matt Matt Coronado, Calgary Flames. Uh, Kyle Peterson, goalie with the Ontario Reign of the AHL, lost under contract to the LA Kings. Connor Garland. For the Vancouver Canucks. Hex Tuck for the Buffalo Sabres. So, yeah, I can also quite loaded, locked and loaded <laughs> with NHLers or players otherwise under contract. Players under contract. Well, there are well, the only one who isn't really. Adam Fantilli, eligible to be drafted. Currently playing for the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, the. Uh, the, you know, the, the men's hockey team of that university. Check it needs to be locked and loaded to right you each other's Ronald Crowd. <laughs> Tucson Roadrunners under well, under contract with Phoenix Coyote or Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. Yeah. After having spent loads of loads you know, you know much of his professional life over in you know, various former Warsaw Pact member states. 
go Czech Republic, and then over in Russia, KHL for one season, and then now the other two's on Roadrunners. Didn't have a great season. So it did did put up a point in two playoff games. But yeah, who knows? Yuri Schmake Smake Hall, Otto Sanders, Who League of the Red Wings, Jakob Zboril of the Boston Bruins, Philip Heedle of the New York Rangers, and that's it. I think, a, you know, I think a very. Alright. I'm sure it's available in another language, but. There's some that are not available. So then going through the rosters, trying to get acquainted with them. So we have Canada, Czechia, Kazakhstan, who knows? Sorry. If you can get anything on Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, yeah, you have a lot of Yeah. Teams based in Kazakhstan are Russia. Um so not very you know, some of them are not very familiar, at least to us in Canada. <laughs> Latvia, you know, for well, players either on a contract with NHL teams or at the NHL. Who else? Boxers. A winger for CQ's Crunch, whilst under contract to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. Of, uh, uh, Artur's Shilov's uh, currently with the Abbots, Abbey, Abbotsford Canucks or Abbey Canucks whilst in their contract to the Vancouver Canucks played a few games the Vancouver team Vancouver Canucks Alv Arvils Bergmanis <laughs> at least in terms of otherwise with American or Canadian teams of the Alaska Nanooks of the University of Alaska Fairbanks it's kind of odd he's there because it's just, Fairbanks is, is so far from so many other trace civilization that it's just, it's like a, a city stuck in the middle of nowhere. But there are others, I mean, I mean, I mean look at cities in New Zealand. You know, they're on an island. They're on one of two islands. You know, Norway. Let's see if there's anything to do with no over here. The rosters for Norway, if there's anything there. It's all available in English, but Alright, gonna go to Canada. Go to French, go to All right. Norway, we have Well, Oli Julian Bjorgvik, home defenseman with Cleveland Monsters. What well, oh, uh, the AHL affiliate of the Columbus Blue, Black, Blue Jackets. No info available about him, though, as to whether he's under contract to the Blue Jackets rather than just an AHL contract. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's... Latvia, yeah. Slovakia. <laughs> Martin Kuromiak. Terrain, one of the contracts of the LA Kings. Oh, wait. No info available on him, so. I don't know. It's not clear if he has an HL, if he has an HL contract. Milos Kalaman. Uh, under contract to the Coyotes via the Tucson Roadrunners. We have Samuel Gnajko. Contract with the Cleveland Monsters. 
Uh, yeah. It's, what did he drafted? 78th overall, 2020. But didn't, you know, was still playing over in Finland until until last season, and then he also played part of time in the in the Super Seattle Thunderbirds of the Western Hockey League, and then over he got, went to the Monsters. Columbus Blue Jacks played a couple games, so we get to know some of these players. It's just so. To go to where go? Pavel Regenda, uh, playing with the San Diego Gulls, was under contract to the Anaheim Ducks. Was he drafted? It's undrafted. <laughs> yeah, and he did get some NHL action, very limited though. Switzerland, we have. In the Rider, the Winnipeg Jets, Tim Bernie, Columbus Blue Jackets, Dennis Malgren, the Avs, Forming the Leafs, Yas Moser, the Coyotes. I think about Slovenia though. So it's gonna be interesting what happens, you know, what there's happens with those teams. So I'm just trying to get used to them. But again, for Canada, it's just you know, right. right, so All right, let's see here. Norway, Slovakia, Slovenia. Well, not surprised. There's not really anyone, any player on the roster, uh, the H on the tournament roster from you know, playing with an HL team. There are some who are playing, you know, outside of Slovenia itself. But yeah, but still. Who knows if they're going to get to stay up? I mean, there's Sweden, Switzerland, or yeah, yeah, probably man. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The ITF World Championship, so yeah, it's so. So I'd say when it comes to Group A, when it comes to my predictions in terms of which teams I think are likely to finish in the top four. I'd say the United States, a good candidate. Sweden, I think it's a good one. You, you ask Sweden, Finland, I think are good candidates to finish in the top four. I'm not sure what Finland's going to do, but I mean, you know, in terms of finishing, in terms of good candidates for relegation, yeah. I mean, I think Austria's a good candidate. Hungary. And one of France, Denmark, and Germany are you know, good, good candidates to be relegated. Keep in mind, the last place team of each group within the top division will be sent down to Division One for the 2024 IHF Men's World Series of Tournaments. Or the, that's the out Men's Worlds. Tournaments 4 1, Finland over the U.S. Not good. <laughs> Not good. An embarrassment. All right, let's see here. If a roster is available on the website there, on the website of the national team, 2023, oh yeah, we have you know, Oli Mata, Kasper Kapanen, Sakari Manin, Kapkako, Miko Rantanen. Rantanen's good. Finland can be very well, it's not going to be easy to push around. But again, we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Now will go for Group E for in terms of candidates to be relegated. I'd say Latvia is a pretty strong one. <laughs> they don't turn things around relatively soon, that is. Slovakia end up very close to winning that game. You know. Slovakia and Czechia was um uh, you know, twenty seven minutes of penalties for her. so yeah, it was some um, you know, Kromiak on a power play for Slovakia and then there was Sedlak, about you know, score two goals. You know, one of them a shorthanded one, and one of them a power play one. So that was important because it was so close. So yeah, that's going to be rather important. I mean, I'd say Slovakia's going to be back. Going to be 
not going to go down in this tournament without a fight, most likely. And I'd say probably, to say Canada, Czechia, Slovakia are good candidates to finish in the top three of that group in terms of relegation. Slovenia, well, <laughs> it earned promotion from Division One, so I'd say it's a good candidate to be promoted to be relegated back down. Let's see what happens. Keep in mind. Keep in mind in Division One, Britain and the British and Polish teams were promoted for next for you know to the top division for next year's tournament. So now we go to the 2024 tournament and you know no surprise. Oh that's funny. The 2024 IHF World Championship. So Czechia has qual qualified as a host. Well Czechia, Britain and Poland. So it'll be interesting to find out I mean, 2025, Sweden and Denmark, I have a feeling they're going to stay up. So, yeah. So, yeah, probably, you know, Jackie is probably going to stay up anyway. It's just too good to go down. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, yeah, no surprise. The only Czechia, Britain, and Poland have qualified. So, let's see what happens. I mean, still quite a ways to go, but I don't have a feeling Canada's going to be relegated. It just, it'd be an embarrassment if it were. But in terms of teams, as I believe, are going to be strong candidates for relegation, I'd say Norway, Kazakhstan, Slovenia, and Latvia. And, you know, yeah. Latvia lost by a huge amount, and the goal difference is so bad that it may come down, that if it's if there's a tie, oh wait, wait, it may not be that. If there's a tie of you know three or more, for you know, you know for the final for last place in that group, it may come down to that goal difference. So who knows? I see though. You know, but it doesn't look too good. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm gonna say for now. Any game that's been completed has already been completed. So we finished with day one. So, so on Friday, we feature in Group A: France and no, France versus Austria, Hungary versus Denmark, and Germany versus Finland. And it'll be interesting to find out what happens with the German team after having lost a close one to its Swedish counterpart. In regulation. So, yeah. Can Finland turn things around? We'll have to see. And then, I don't know, on Friday in Group B, we have Switzerland versus Slovenia, Norway and Kazakhstan, and the old five things finishing these off, Slovak and Latvian teams. So, we've talked a lot about the International Ice Hockey Federation Adult Men's World Tournament. So now, no 28 minute 50 second mark of for the video. Now I'm going to go into the um, going to go into the uh, <clears throat> the Stanley Cup playoffs and the Canadian teams that still remain. And to keep in mind that we now have a Stanley Cup finalist, of a Stanley Cup semifinalist, Carolina Hurricanes beating the Devils 3-2 in overtime. I mean, single overtime that game. Stanley Cup playoffs. So, yeah. So, yeah. There's, uh, what is that? Oh. Let me go down to Devils and Canes. There's some quite lopsided results until the last one. It was 3 2 with uh, seven, with a bit under seven minutes and ten seconds having gone overtime. Yes, for Faust. 
a winger, Swedish winger for the Canes, having scored the <clears throat> the game, the series winning goal. It was a close one. Here is Schmid of the Devils, Switzerland, having made 36 saves on 39 shots. Not enough to advance, so the Leafs will face Canes if the Leafs, if they can beat the Panthers in that conference semifinal, will meet the Canes in a conference final. But the Leafs first have to get past the Panthers, and that hasn't happened just yet. So we come to the bracket. Last night, the Stars beat the Kraken by a country mile. The Western Conference semifinal between the Kraken and Stars, it was very, it was been very close. It was a um, Kraken overtime win, followed by um, a win by the Stars in the next game to split that series. You know, with the you know first two games it was a split at the American Airlines Center, home of the Stars, then the home of the Kraken, the Clampton Ledge Arena. There was also a split. Kraken win three, three, you know, game three. Dallas Stars win game four. Dallas Stars win game five. Kind of unusual that that there will be a you know, a very early game, Climb Foot Arena, 4 p.m. Pacific, beginning of the broadcast on Sportsnet. Um, but again, most likely three games to two, I'd say... I'd say the Stars are more likely to win that series and meet the winner of the Oilers Golden Knights series in the conference final than the Kraken. So he, Dallas Stars, was they, they were behind two games, one in their series. They won two in a row. Two very good games for the Stars. 6-3 in game four. That was at Climb Pledge. And then game five at home, 5-2. So that's what the Oilers have to do. You know, the Oilers have already won one game. But, you know, in the odd number games in that series, games one and three, the Oilers didn't play particularly well. 6-4 was for game one. 6-4 was game one uh, in favor of the Golden Knights. And then 5-1 in favor of the Golden Knights in game three. There was some, there was some rough stuff in uh, game you know, game four of that of that. Uh, Western Conference semifinal. I think more of that in a previous video, but again, the main thing is physicality is likely not going to just wane. Maybe the players don't understand what, you know, that with two of their own suspended for game five of that series, that maybe they've got to show a little bit more restraint. Because game six could be huge. It probably will be for one, you know, at least for the team that ends up winning tonight's game. Key thing with the Oilers, can they win an odd number game for the first time since the Oilers King series? That's going to be key. The Oilers lose tonight's game, it means winning two in a row. And yeah, that's not good. That won't be good. But again, <clears throat> it was ugly. It was, uh, I'm going to go to that Oilers game. And, on two nights ago. If I can just get there and oh. Yeah, it's four one in favor of the others. Bukestad, Bouchard, Ackholm, Newton Hopkins. So neither McDavid nor Drysidle scored, but both provided assists. On different, you know, on goals, so that matters. Question is, whether the Oilers can continue. I mean, they're playing on the road, so maybe there's less pressure to win. The Oilers did, after all, split, you know, split the first two games of the series at T-Mobile Mobile Arena, so that's good news. 
Because at home, the Oilers haven't done great. Oh, having won three of five. And as of now, let me see here. The Oilers have a 6-4 record in their in the post in their postseason run. 3-2 at home, 3-2 on the road. Key thing going to be for the Oilers is if they can win tonight's game. If they can do that, I don't think the Golden Knights are going to quit, but if they can do that, they can take that momentum from game four into game five, they got a good chance of winning that game. Of that of that fifth game. Now to go to the Leafs and what the Leafs are going to need to do. It's a real concern that I have for the Leafs have, for six straight games, scored fewer than three goals. The Leafs are barely in the series as it is. You know, they're down three games to one. Am I confident the Leafs are going to win? We'll see. I'm not very confident, though. But we'll see what happens. It's going to have to take more than just, I believe, more than two goals to win. But we'll see. I'm not getting good vibes because the Leafs barely squeaked through. Joe Wall put up an amazing performance. But again, I don't think these Panthers are going to quit. They did, you know, I don't think it was any accident that they have a three game, three games to non series lead. And uh, so far in the series, it hasn't been good. So what I'm going to do is going to go to right here. We go to the ESPN schedule. Let's go to the ESPN web page. With their postseason run. They've been, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's been the Leafs, for the first time, all series allowed fewer than three goals. And that is important. On the other hand, if the Leafs aren't careful, so yeah, Leafs in the series have allowed 11 goals. So that's two and three quarters of a goal per game on average. Not great. When considering the Leafs have scored just eight, on average, two per game. So the Leafs have a win, but they'll be lucky to get another, provided they score fewer than three goals in tonight's game. It's hard to be optimistic the Leafs will change things around substantially. But again, it is encouraging, though, that the Leafs, that, again, two members of the core four did score. Nylander and Marner. Marner also, you know, Marner assisted, with Marner having assisted on the Nylander goal, Bunting having provided the other assist on the Nylander goal. Jake McCabe, a defenseman, assisted on the Marner goal. But, again, barely enough. And that is not very good. And there, you know, you know, aside from very late in the game, when it comes to lack of speed and keeping up, it was, uh, yeah, Alex Kerfoot, two minutes of tripping. And that turned into a goal for the Panthers. And for the rest of the way, it was Joe Wall having to try to shut the door. Each team ended up with, a, with the same number of shots. But again, the Leafs did allow a goal in their own penalty kill, power play, score a goal, so the special teams goals evened each other out. But the Leafs barely got through, giving away the puck 11 times, the Panthers 5. But again, turn over, turning over the puck, the Leafs were lucky to escape with that win. They may not be so lucky in the coming game. Anyway, with respect to the Stanley Cup playoffs and the Adult Men's Worlds Tournament, a cheer still is. Go Oilers go. Go Leafs go. And go Canada go. Keep in mind that it may very well be that the Oilers remain among Canada's teams, but the Leafs do not. So, if you like the video, I do encourage you to click the like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you're free to do so. Uh, and if you do, you know, liking the video, subscribing are completely optional. But if you do subscribe, you'll get more timely notification of the videos that I post to YouTube. I do try to post videos at least every other week if I can. 
I normally post on on sports, at least on hockey, and when bat when the NBA season is underway for the Raptors on the Raptors, and yes, the Raptors off season doesn't really have a clear direction yet, but there's still ways to go before training camps begin, like in September. So yes, I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna watch some hockey, see how the game, see how the fifth games of each of the Panthers, Leafs, and Oilers, Gold Knights series go. Goodbye for now.